All right, guys, welcome back to Sub2 Investor. My name is Hans, and in this episode, I'm gonna show you how we stand to make $133,000 on a house we bought subject to with no equity on which we did no rehab and we have no tenants in the property either. Stay tuned to find out how we're going to make this happen. Check it out. This episode is part of my Real Sub 2 Breakdown series. This is my fourth Subject 2 deal. In that series, I'm walking through actual Sub 2 deals and creative finance deals I've closed and which I hold currently showing you how we found the deals, how we did the deals, and how we're making money on the deal so that you can learn from my experience and join me on my journey and hopefully I help you on yours. This deal taught me that we need to stop doing rehabs and we just need to focus on acquiring properties and placing tenant buyers into them. I've come across investors who do a similar model to what we do now and they're very hush about <laughs> their strategy. They don't want people to know about it because they're afraid that if other investors find out, then they'll ruin it. If you haven't seen the previous episode on where this lead came from, how we negotiated with the seller, went through a loan modification process with them, go ahead and check out that last episode. It might be some helpful context for you. I'm just going to be going through the numbers on this deal and showing you just what a ridiculous profit we made up front and a pretty amazing cash flow, as well as a nice hearty back end payment down the road. This was our fourth subject to deal. The previous two, we had done some extensive rehab before we either lease optioned or sold it on contract for deed. With this deal and the next few, we started to learn that we didn't really have to do as much rehab as we thought we did. That was part of the process of gaining velocity in this business model, kind of figuring out what a tenant buyer or contract for a deed buyer, what they're willing to put up with in a property in order to have ownership of that property without going through the traditional loan. That little bit, what I said right there is the magic sauce. That means you don't have to do as much rehab or any rehab on these deals, which means you can do more deals and scale your cash flow more quickly. Let's get into the numbers. This property had an ARV of uh, roughly 300 to maybe $315,000. Now the loan balance was uh, $230,000. It was really a uh, cosmetic rehab. This was 1,800 square feet. You know, if you're just kind of going to do a quick and dirty carpet paint rehab, maybe you're looking at $30 a square feet or so. This is not how you run numbers on a rehab, but just doing a quick and dirty analysis here. You were looking at about a $50,000 rehab just to get this thing looking really good for the market. And then of course, you know, you're going to have money costs, lending costs for your short-term money, and then costs to sell on the back end when you list it on the market. So we're just going to call it closing costs and money costs, about $30,000. So your total all in on this property $310,000. So this deal has no equity, guys. No equity on this property. This is why these deals are so amazing is because very few people are targeting them. And even if they do target them and get these deals subject to, they don't know what to do with them on the back end to make the profit. So let me show you what we're going to do with it. Now we bought it for 230K, which was the loan balance, okay? We didn't give the seller any cash. I think actually we gave him a pair of golf clubs because he was a really big golfer. And just as a thank you for going through the process of a very lengthy and drawn out loan modification ordeal, we got him a pair of golf clubs and they were a little expensive. But on the HUD, we bought it for 230. A loan balance was $230,000. The interest rate that he got on the loan modification was flat 3%. Amazing interest rate. PITI was approximately $1,480 a month. Our closing costs were very, very 
minimal, just about a thousand bucks. What did we do to this property to get it ready to sell? Well, we did nothing. We spent zero dollars and zero 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 dollars point zero zero dollars on a rehab of this property. We did nothing to the property. We collected some rents for a few months. And then once th those tenants were gone, we put it out there to sell on a contract for deed. We will go to Facebook Marketplace and then go to Zillow for rent, not the for sale by owner. Usually the buyers tend to come from the renter pool, not from the buyer pool. The other thing we do is we place bandit signs like yard signs in the front yard of the house, but then also all around the neighborhood advertising the house for sale, financing available, no banks, owner financing and we direct them to the house. Once they drive to the house, phone number is on the signs in the front yard. That's how we generate traffic to find our buyers. We ended up selling it on this contract for deed for I believe it was $290,000. Again, the value proposition of home ownership was so amazing that we were able to get this price without doing anything to the property. All right, and then we collected a down payment in the amount of $27,000. Till you do one of these, it's gonna be hard to believe that somebody's gonna be willing to buy a house as is, a house that needs work and rehab and bring a large down payment. It's gonna be hard to believe this, but you gotta just go out there and do your first one. And after you do that, you will begin to prove the concept. So the contract for deed, unpaid balance would be approximately $2,063,000. The interest rate that we um, charged on this one was 6.81%, which is a very low interest rate for seller financing. And so the payment that we receive each month is $2,100. Market rents right now are around $2,300. So they've gone up, I believe when we sold it, market rents might have been $1,900 or $2,000. So we were getting a little bit above market rents. Let's just say we go back in time and we rent this property instead of do this. If that were the case, then yes, we would have a rental property at $0 in we would just be taking the house subject to not bringing the seller any cash, maybe a set of golf clubs. We'd be zero in. This would be our payment every month, and we'd be collecting $2,100 in rents every month. Now, if you are a landlord, then you'll be familiar with the 50% rule, or some people call it the 40% rule. And that is that 50% of the rents you receive each month. So in this case, it would be $1,050 would be budgeted toward your expenses. If you have to replace a roof or an HVAC unit, then maintenance, toilet breaks, sink is leaking, make readies, vacancy costs, and then management costs. Am I missing anything else? And then there might be some, you know, other minor costs. Maybe it's HOA fees or occupancy inspection fees utilities that you have to pay like lawn care, snow removal, things like that. If that were the case, then you know, you'd be negative because you'd be at 1050 the budget for those things and then you would have this mortgage payment every month. So you would actually be negative in cash flow if this were a rental. What we've done here is that we've created profit up front, cash flow right now and then profit on the back end. So on the front end, we made $27,000. Our only expense was our closing costs. So on the front end, we made $26,000, which, you know, would be the equivalent of a flip, right? Like the flipper who had this house under contract might have made $26,000. They would have had to gone through a six month rehab and then putting on the, on the market and all that stuff. Then our cash flow is the difference between what we receive every single month and what we have to pay every single month. And that never changes. The taxes and the insurance might fluctuate, but if they do, if it goes up, then we just raise this up because it's our buyer who's paying the taxes and insurance. So our cash flow is $620 a month. And then we have a back end payment as well. And that is going to be basically the difference between 
our buyer's unpaid balance of 263 and our sub two loan balance of 230. So in this case, $33,000 back end spread. And this number does fluctuate because we have our amortization table and their amortization uh, schedule. And that's going to fluctuate as time goes on. But your average seller finance buyer is going to be in a property for 10 years. So we put our total profit analysis at 10 year at the 10 year mark. And when you add all this together, the 10 year total profit on this deal, if you annualize the cash flow, this is how much it is per year, $7,440. So for 10 years, and then you add the front end and the back end would be drum roll, please, $133,000 on a deal which had zero equity on which we did zero rehab and on which we have zero tenants, zero maintenance, zero capital expenditures, zero vacancies, zero property managers who don't know how to do their job, very minimal hassle. Again, I don't know why you're doing rehabs and spending six months of your life pulling your hair out. I don't know why you would do anything else besides make $620 a month on this deal, make $26,000 up front on this deal, and then have a nice hearty check waiting for you one day. Plus, I have a good feeling that I'm actually helping somebody attain home ownership, which is an admirable American goal. If you found this analysis helpful, um, let me know. I'm very curious to know what you think about these videos, if they're helpful to you, and what kind of questions do you have that I can address in subsequent episodes. This is the new channel. I'm trying my best to provide as much free and valuable content that's genuinely helpful to you. If you'd please hit the like button and subscribe, that would mean the world to me. What would you have done differently on this deal? Are there any specific questions about this that I have not addressed? A lot more interesting content coming your way. It's really fun to share these deals that we poured our heart and soul, and in some cases, our sweat equity into and share it with the world and to let you know that you know, I was in that place at one point of really struggling to figure out who I was as an investor, right? Like what I wanted to do, what strategy was the best, and was I going to be able to do it? Really, the only thing that I want to do in the realm of investing right now is this kind of approach because of the velocity that you can get. How many of these deals could you do in a given year to stack up this cash flow so that you're financially independent, can quit your corporate job? and can begin living the life that you want to live. I hope you found this video helpful and informative and interesting. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.